The Jaffe Collection was given to FAU in 1998. It's 10 years. 10 years we grew, I gave. The original gift was 2,800 books. We're now up to 12,000. So we needed space. And we've changed the, the mission. This is going to be much more academic, much more hands-on, much more exhibitory, much more museum quality than, than collection quality. And I think that's what you get when you come in. It's more of a feeling of a, a museum and, and lecture hall and a book collection. So it really did become a natural to us. The quality of the collection, the beauty of the collection, the historic significance, uh, and the literary importance of that collection. There were just too many golden facets that went into its creation and its evolution not to provide the expanded space to the collection itself. One of the opportunities of getting a new room, of designing a new room, is it allows you to do things or get things that you always wanted to get a better viewing of books. The one thing I insisted on was lighting. I said, we can compromise on a lot of things, but I cannot compromise on lighting. Books have to be seen and read easily. When we established a collection, I felt we needed a logo. And a friend of mine uh, by the name of Suzanne Moore, who is a leading calligrapher in the United States, we asked her to design one for us. And it's a little painting. A book is like a garden carried in the pocket. And we moved to this room. I said, we need to take that and make it into a stained glass window, five foot square. And that's on 24 hours a day. Light is what knowledge is all about, right? First, it was just a collection where people came to see interesting books. But uh, now we teach people how to make books. Uh, we teach book structures, paper decoration, uh, book binding. Uh, we teach letterpress printing and eventually paper making as well. So it is uh, definitely more of a center because it's, it's so much more than just a collection now. It is, it's, we're teaching. In considering the new space for the Book Arts Center, it was a question of what do we do with the original space? And it turned out to be perfect. We made that into a print shop for printing presses. We got gifts given to us of old printing presses and now we've got the most beautiful print shop in all of Florida, so we have been told. Our printing presses are used by our uh, students who uh, are taking our classes and workshops. Our workshops are open to everyone. Uh, I, we get mostly um, people from the community, but also we see people from all over the country. We limit uh, our classes in size to 12. We never take more than 12. All our classes are hands-on. Everybody's making something, doing something. Tom Merton is uh, one of the students in our Mutanabe Street class, although he could be teaching me a few things, and he, he has been teaching me a few things, actually. Uh, he is working on one of these Mutanabe Street broadsides. Well, on my part, in a very selfish way, I know that my granddaughter can come here and look at my book someday and find out what her grandfather's all about. If I were buying books just about architecture, then I would have a limitation. I'm, I'm buying eclectically. I'm interested in the whole world. And I just don't know what's out there myself. When somebody brings it in there, I say, I see the light, I say, boy, I think this can be useful. What does this thing say? This is like a beautiful woman coming by. Hey, you don't know what she's really like until you know what she's really like. But you gotta like what you see first. I wish I could say it's a search process. I'm at a point in life here at this collection where the book artists are looking for us. And that's part of the fun of having the collection, having a collection like this. You meet the most interesting people in the world from everywhere. And they come from out of nowhere and appear at your front door and say, I've made a book. I want you to see it. And of course, we want to see it. And, uh, and that's how we get most of our books. Andrew Binder came in, strolling in one day and with a rather large book under his arm, saying this is his latest production of books. And he, he wanted to show it to me. He opened it up and I said, Andrew, you've got a winner here. And he had just come back from uh, four years off and on going to Thailand to produce a book, a pop-up, about the Thai temples. And it's now in the Jaffe Collection. It's one of a kind only one in the world is here. So I proudly show it and everybody likes to see it. It's a very dramatic book. 
I've been very fortunate to have um, assigned to me, to this collection, uh, three people. I am the programs coordinator, so I arrange for exhibitions and then think about uh, programs that fit the exhibition. So workshops that uh, maybe teach some of the aspects of things that are shown in the exhibition, uh, gallery talks uh, with artists that we're exhibiting perhaps, or talks about things that, that fit the theme. The job of ephemerist is very different from the job of archivist. The job of archivist is keeping the records of a specific person. That ephemera is something that's momentarily here. My role here at the collection is pretty much uh, maintaining the collection itself. So that includes handling the books as they come in, ordering the books, getting the books paid for, and then even doing some cataloging of the books themselves, making sure we know where to find the books. Getting in a new exhibit is always kind of like uh, Christmas morning. We just uh, opened up this new exhibition called uh, Dafatir, which is a collection of artist books from Iraq. It just astounds me that in a place such as Iraq, where there's so much going on, people are still making books. And uh, so we did open these crates and found some really incredible treasures. One that uh, stands out, and it looks like an American graphic novel. Uh, you know, incredible pictures, no text, but it tells a story for sure. Typically a book would be purchased by Arthur uh, or donated by an artist, uh, would come to the collection. And then once it comes here, uh, then I'll we'll actually look at the book uh, and enter it into our database. Uh, but our database is a little bit different. It's more detailed and uh, it relates to how we might use the book in the collection. You look through the book and you, and you try and figure out if it's primarily for its illustrations, for its text, uh, for the, the binding uh, or other features of the book. Those are the types of keywords that you would associate with the book itself. Tag is uh, an artist book by Mark Wagner, and uh, it begins with many hundreds or maybe thousands, I don't know, of uh, tags from clothing. That's silly, stupid, impossible. I pull at it, and it won't come off. I twist it, and my skin twists too. I dig my fingernails at the edge, and there are stitches there. It is attached. It's sewn into me. The book has a different function today. It's a more, it's not words as much as visuality. And so the book has to function that way as a visual thing. Amongst the books we have is one anamorphic book. And that uh, book is uh, about trees. And it's a marvelous book and you take out a tube and you put it on a platform and you have uh, this drawings around it, and it reflects up into the anamorphic tubes, and you get these trees in all kinds of shapes. It's a wonderful piece of work, and it shows you how we can see things differently than what we think we see them. Exquisite Horse, that was uh, a project that was done by letterpress printers all over the country, and half of them did horse heads, and half of them did horse tails, and they all they knew was where the two would meet in the center and that they just knew the size of the paper as well and and that was that was the only requirement they just took it from there and some are very literal their design uh, drawings of horses and others uh, other people used wood type to suggest horse figures and and others just set type in the shape of horses and it's, it's a good project we have our collection of what we call comic books or graphic novels, that visuality that I talked about in a comic book. The comic book has had an enormous effect on the way books are produced. I keep the comics from the New York Times Sunday section because these are eventually going to be books. And we have the originals. We have a large collection of photo books. Uh, most of them are very, very unusual books that you don't see in stores. We have a book in the collection by Chuck Close, the famous photographer, called A Couple of Ways of Doing Something. Each poet is photographed. 
and they're very famous poets. And usually you don't see a full portrait of a famous person accompanied by what he's written. And this is what makes this book double whammy. The book isn't just to be read. It's to be touched. It's to be heard. It's to be manipulated like you do with a, with a book that's pop-up you have to do with manipulation. So that's, there's just a lot more variety in the, what, what we're doing with the book today. Uh, Down the Rabbit Hole is an artist book by Tara Bryan from Newfoundland, Canada, and it is an example of a tunnel book, but it operates in a non-traditional way for tunnel books, which usually uh, pull away from the reader. Uh, down the Rabbit Hole actually drops down and you read down the book. Either the well was very deep, or she fell very slowly, for she had plenty of time as she went down to look around her and to wonder. Uh, My Twelve Steps is a book by Emily Martin. She's an Iowa City uh, book artist, and it has to do with, uh, with addiction and addiction programs. There's just like this thin strip of paper at the fore edge, and when you open it, it uh, becomes a staircase, and there are 12 steps, and, and her 12 steps are printed on, on the front of each stair. A lot of the books here don't look like books, <laughs> and uh, so there's a lot of unusual structures. early on that the collection is so visual and it's so unique that you really, the only way for people to see it who can actually come here to the collection uh, is to see it online. And so we were trying to, to give us a little bit more of a presence online where people could actually look at books, see things from the collection, and uh, learn about the collection that way. Reaching out to educators is easy with books, so it's a great fit for high school classes, middle school classes. Uh, we are seeing more and more of these classes here at the collection, and they come here not knowing what to expect, which is pretty typical, and they often leave just astounded at what they've seen. What is is what has happened, Hegel says, and what has happened is what is spread out through time. Who cares what Hegel says? What happens is what is. What is is what is timeless, caught in time. I call our little talks uh, Book Arts 101 talks, and uh, they come here to the, the Jaffe Collection, whether it's a class or a community group, and most often they see uh, a short video about what the collection is about, uh, which sort of serves as an introduction to artist books. Afterwards, we look at books. We do a survey of all kinds of artist books, and sometimes we'll choose them based on what sort of class or group it is. Uh, but oftentimes they're just uh, random connections. It's, you know, we, I show one book and then it just leads to another book and then someone asks a question and that leads to another book. And uh, by the time they're done, uh, they may have seen 20 or 30 artist books. And sometimes, if it's a small enough uh, group of people, we can also do a little letterpress printing and do a little book binding as well and then they can leave with a little souvenir. We see our role not just teaching about books, the Mutnabi Street exhibit is based on uh, Mutnabi Street in Baghdad. And uh, during the Iraqi war, uh, uh, Mutnabi was bombed. It was the center for booksellers, bookstalls, authors, writers. It was bombed and 130 people were killed. And a coalition of people from around the world, including us, got together and decided we wanted to do something to memorialize these people and to contribute to a better world. Uh, the Mutanabi Street exhibit began uh, actually with a call to printers that uh, happened soon after the attack on Tanabi Street, where uh, the coalition was looking for printers to uh, create uh, literary broadsides uh, sort of in response to the bombing. Uh, I answered the call as a, as a printer myself. Uh, as soon as I heard about it, I knew it was something that I wanted to take part in. And uh, one thing led to another. You know, working here, it became obvious this could be a place where those broadsides could be exhibited. And uh, 
we also have a strong digital library here at FAU, so the idea of, of digitizing them for the internet came about as well. And so we decided to have poems written by Iraqis and Americans who uh, are poets about Iraqi culture and life. And uh, we've got 43 of these broadsides poems. And we're going to eventually get to 130, memorializing each one of the dead. Tonight, Mutanabi Street starts here at the Jaffe. Bring to this evening as much joy as you do sorrow. Leave with the idea of the commonality of Mutanabi Street to any street here that holds a bookstore or cultural institution. Join us in helping others to see this. And finally, kick up some dust and make enough noise tonight so that it seems a wedding party is approaching. قربت منه الشمعدان وصابيعي دمع من هذا Yesterday I lost a country I was in a hurry and didn't notice when it fell from me like a broken branch from a forgetful tree The Quran the Bible, the Britannica, all burn the same color. It was very well balanced, it was very well blended. The interlacing, the reading with the performing and ending it with the dance, it was just a wonderfully satisfying program. Well, I think it was an absolutely wonderful event. Uh, I think a great time to, to expose um, people of the culture, the Arab culture and the music and the history of uh, Watanabe Street. Uh, I think it was wonderful. I hope there's more like this. I think we need a lot of this. I was struck by the original title, Mutanavi Street Starts Here, because Mutanavi Street, as they said, is everywhere. It's any street that has a bookstore on it. It's any street where, pe where artists work. I think the role of any university is to uh, f further knowledge, further understanding, uh, further unity in the world. And I think this, these kinds of activities, like the Mutanabi exhibition, does that kind of thing. They, these people are not our enemy. The world is not our enemy. These are other human beings in the world. They write poetry. They read poetry. I think connecting with the world of ideas is just a natural extension of connecting with the world of books. Books have always been vehicles for ideas. And artist books, to me, artist books really take those ideas to a different level. And if we can help to make that happen, I think that's a wonderful thing. There's a book in the collection called For Boys Who Dream of War. This is a book about the Vietnam War. It is in the shape of an American flag that is folded that you give to the mother or father of a deceased soldier. When you're a little boy, you play soldiers and we go to war thinking of it as an exciting, great adventure in life, one that boys should experience before they go to their own demise. He enumerates things in a way of showing statistics in another way, and how many died of, of wounds, and how many died of, of cholera, and how many died of different, because they don't just get wounded. You put the same statistics in a, write them in two columns, and you, you forget it right away. You'll never forget boys who go to war after you've seen that book. There are book artists who have a lot to say about world events and you know books are something that we're all familiar with. It's kind of different from going to an art exhibit and seeing paintings or sculpture. Uh, people connect with books in a different way I think and uh, there are many book artists who take on these challenges of, of what's going on in the world and uh, it's, this is the perfect venue to show things like that. There is the Flag Project by Maureen Cummins. This is a project that uh, she took on soon after the bombing of the World Trade Center in 2001. Uh, it's a response to just everywhere she looked there were flags and it was a time when it was almost, uh, if you didn't have a flag, you were perhaps singled out as being unpatriotic, unsupportive. Uh, she was responding to all of that. So she did all of these flags that were in response to the things that she was seeing here at home and abroad in response to Americans. 
Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a fascinating work. Another book that deals with world events is one uh, by Constance Wu, and she did a book. It's actually two books in one. It's a dos a dos binding. Um, one side is a book called What Swept Away, and the other side is a book called What Remained. And this was uh, in response to Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. They're bound together, but they operate as two separate books. Uh, there is no text. There's just images, and they are uh, digitally manipulated images. A very powerful visual viewing of what happened. The Jaffe Collection, uh, there is stuff here from all over the world. Uh, it's uh, sort of a collection without borders. And I think it is important for us to collect books in that way. Uh, we really have no parameters, and I think we just want to expose our students and our general public to as much as we can. So if something comes up that is something that we haven't seen before or something that is done in a very different way, uh, it's something that we want to have here. John Cutrone is, I hope, will take over this running of this collection in the near future. He has his own private press called the Convivio Press. He can teach book binding, paper making, letter press, and he's got the most calm, wonderful manner about him. And he's quiet, but his mind is always at work. And so he's a, he's a treat and a pleasure to have around. And I have great hopes for the future of this collection. It has always been uh, something that I've felt strongly about and, and felt that it was an important responsibility. And, uh, I don't think that's ever going to change. I have a certain passion about uh, book arts and the, all the related things that go with exchanged. it, whether it's a concert and form at Navi Street or uh, teaching people how to print. And just being a part of it is, is is all that I would ever need. This is a way of life. Reading is a way of life. A way of accumulating knowledge. The collection's breathtaking. Uh, not only was my first reaction uh, the breathtaking na nature of that collection, but every time I go there, the, every time I have the opportunity to view that collection, I have to believe that uh, it rivals anything on an international scale that exists. I think it's, it's just a really great resource, a visual resource for, for students, for artists. Um, anybody who has an interest in, in art or, or books um, or, or anything to do with literature. Um, for me, uh, being a creative person, I find so much inspiration just looking at the books themselves. The Jaffe Collection is a unique uh, collection because it's not about one thing. The artist books are fantastic. There are so many unique books that we have. There are no place else in the world. You know, 10 years ago, when I became interested in books myself, living here in Florida, there were not a lot of options as to uh, places where I could explore artist books. Uh, you know, I basically had to leave the state to see books like these and, and to learn about uh, the things I wanted to learn. And I think we serve an important purpose as to just being a regional place where, where artists can come in Florida and learn these things. Art Jaffe is, uh, to me, uh, a hero of Florida Atlantic University uh, because I'm surrounded by heroes every day among our faculty and staff. Uh, he is a marvelous example of someone who is passionate about something that he believes in and has created, I think, something in perpetuity that will uh, provide a, a marvelous demonstration of art, theme, literature, history, importance uh, for this university forevermore. But I think in a more real sense, Arthur collects the soul of, of this world when he looks for books. It's not an academic library. It's not math. It's not science. It's the things that fall in between the words that Arthur always captures, that he finds, the emotion, the spirit. And, and that's the heart of his collection. He finds the heart of the world. I don't really want people to uh, remember me particularly. It doesn't matter. I want them to remember the collection and say, that's a hell of a collection, and that's all that counts. And I think that's true of everything in life, you know. I'm here, I'm gone, I've done my best. And uh, if I've left something behind that other people can enjoy, I think I've been very successful. There's a saying, be ashamed to die until you have some victory for humanity. And that's 
my that's my motto. Thank <laughs> you. 